two ways to add documents such as presentations or word processed files to your course. One way is by simply dragging them and dropping them straight onto your course page. We look at that here. The second way is Activity Chooser and File Picker and we look at that in a later video. This means you're able to use the drag and drop method. Over on the right I have a presentation, lecture notes. I simply need to choose a section where I want it. Here for instance I'd like the lecture notes in the listening section and simply drag it to where I want and then it will automatically be uploaded. And if you make a mistake, remember that we can move it either by drag and drop or if we have a very long course page by clicking on the move icon and choosing where we want it to go. For instance here from the listening section into the reading section. It's also possible to drag and drop several files at the same time if you click and select all of them. You can drag them all into your course page together. Also, if you put your files into a folder, you can drag the whole folder in. Then when you drop it in, you're prompted to unzip it and this will then display the folder with your files inside. Every user has their personal file storage area known as private files. This is useful as a teacher if you like to organise your files into named folders and upload them privately until you want to display them on your course. It's also useful for students if they start work during the day, save their work in their private files, complete it at home and then submit it to their teacher later. Private files can be accessed from the nav drawer on the left. If we click to manage private files, we can see what it looks like. We can, if the browser allows, simply drag a file to the private files area. We could click add and add from the file picker or we can create a folder and upload files into there. Quiz Automatic grading If you want to assess learners formatively or summatively with questions for which there are specified answers, very powerful quiz enables you to do this. We can only look at a few of the features of the quiz in this screencast. Quiz allows you to use different types of questions, not just multiple choice. And it also allows you to add, as here, media, images, video, sound files as part of your questions. If we go to our course and see how to add a quiz, the first thing to note is that in the More link from the gear menu, we can access the question bank. When a quiz is created, you create the questions separately and store them separately, so they can be reused by you in a later quiz or by your colleague in the same course in a different quiz. So if you wish, you could start by adding your quiz questions to this question bank here and then make a quiz another day. Then in the section we want the quiz, we click Add an activity or resource. This takes us to Activity Chooser and we scroll down to Quiz. Quiz is an activity because the learners are interacting with it. The first thing that we do is create the front page if you like. There are many different settings in a quiz and it is worth exploring all of them. If there's anything you're not sure of, the question mark help icon gives you extra information. We then see add and if we already have questions we could add a random question to our quiz or a particular question from the question bank which we might have added to earlier or a colleague might have added to earlier. But we are starting anew from nothing, so let's click to add a new question. We are then presented with a list of question types to choose from and note that although most of these questions are questions where you provide the answer, it is possible by choosing essay to have learners typing an essay which we would then manually have to grade. We have our first quiz question which we can preview by clicking the magnifying glass icon. So we then go on and continue adding questions to our quiz. Finally, looking at a quiz that's already been made, it's easy to change the order of the questions by dragging them up or down and we can divide our quiz up into sections as well. As a teacher, you can have your learners submit work through your course. This saves on paper and it's better than email 
because when they submit, you'll see a list of your class only, not cluttered up with emails from colleagues and organisations. What they submit can be uploaded files or text written directly, or, as we see if we look at this example of an assignment, because you can type your instructions into text editor, it doesn't only have to be text. You can add links, images or videos relevant to your assignment. An assignment may be for one individual or it may be for a group and as a teacher you can choose whether or not to see the identities of your learners as you're grading it. With the Atto editor, teachers and students can directly record audio or video. Here the teacher is recording an example video for the students to follow. Because assignment is so powerful, it has many different options. The name is important because this is what the learners will see on the course page. And then in description you add what you want them to do for the assignment. If you want to include images, media, links, you click the appropriate icons. You can also upload additional support documents for them if needed. You can then choose when you want them to send in their work, with due dates or a cut-off date, and you can also set yourself a reminder when to grade by. The due date will display in the timeline on the dashboard for learners, and the remind me to grade by will display in the timeline on the dashboard for you. What's important next is to decide your submission type. In other words, if you want them to upload one or several files, you make sure that file submission is ticked, and you can choose the number of files you want and you can specify one or more types of files you want them to upload. If you want them merely to type an essay, you select online text, click the question mark help icon against any if you need more information. For instance, in feedback types, setting comment in line will allow you to type directly on the learner's work just as you would when grading on paper. In submission settings, you can decide if you want them to accept an agreement that their work is their own. In group submission settings, you can get them to work and submit as a group. And in notifications, we can choose whether or not to be messaged when students submit, and also whether or not by default students will be messaged when we've graded their work. If we click Grade, we can see that it's possible to choose a number out of which the assignment can be graded, if you tick blind marking, then you won't initially be able to see which learner has submitted which piece of work. And marking workflow and allocation are useful when sharing the course with other teachers to divide up, moderate and monitor the progress of grading. But for now, let's just save and return to course and our assignment is ready for our students to submit. Each course has its own gradebook, which you can access by going to the grades link in the navigation drawer. Here's an example gradebook in a different course. The first screen is the grader report where you can see the students you have and graded activities. Grade history will allow you to see the different grades and when they were modified and by whom. You can also import grades that you have offline as easily as pasting from a spreadsheet and you can export them as different formats. Activity completion or completion tracking allow students to see their progress throughout a course using check or tick boxes on the side of activities. The boxes with dotted lines are ticked automatically when students meet certain criteria. The boxes with solid lines, students must click to manually complete them. Activity completion reports are also available for teachers, as we can see here, so they can check the progress of their students in a course. Our teacher Sam has a course welcome page if she clicks into it and then clicks Edit Settings, she can then scroll down to select the criteria for activity completion. The choices are not to indicate it, so no checkbox, to indicate it manually, so students click to say they've completed it, or to show it automatically based on criteria. We can see that there are various requirements. And for a forum, for example, our teacher can require a grade, or require that students post a certain number of discussions or replies and the activity will only be marked complete when they've done that. Note also the link Course Completion from that drop-down menu. Here, our teacher has three options. She can specify activities required for completing a course. She can change default criteria, that's usually manual. And she can also bulk change criteria, which have already been set. Here. Our administrator is on the analytics model screen 
and we see students who have not accessed the course recently and students who have not accessed the course yet. From the Actions menu, she can obtain an Insights report. When the teacher checks Insights, he has the option to select some or all of the students and perform a bulk action, such as messaging them. Students now receive clearer notifications to remind them of upcoming activities. Teachers may be allowed to delete messages in group conversations, conversations may be muted, there's a new Group Digest email, a link to the full messaging page and a personal space to make private notes. The teacher is accessing the messaging drawer and because he has the capability, he's now able to delete unwanted messages in a conversation. There's now a mute unmute option in group and private conversations and if a conversation is muted, email notifications won't be received. For conversations in an unmuted group, a new digest email will be sent when there are new messages. A link, see all, at the bottom allows you to navigate to the full messaging page where there is an improved two-column layout. And in the starred messaging section, there is a new personal messaging space for to-do lists, draft messages or reminders. Teachers may now easily filter questions in the question bank using tags. Here, our teacher is creating a new quiz question and he adds a tag. Here, he's in the question bank and he can also tag a question from here. He can then use the filter in the question bank to easily locate questions with the same tag. Regular users may tag their interests in their profile and also tag blog entries. Managers and teachers can tag courses by default from the course settings page. So let's look there and scrolling down, we see a new section, tags. If you click the arrow, you're presented with existing tags, which you can then add. And you can also type in new tags and add them quickly by pressing enter. Any tags the teacher enters here can then be searched from site pages, tags. As a teacher, it's useful to have a copy of our course that we can keep safe, perhaps to reuse it in a different site or even give a copy to a colleague. And to make a backup of our course, we need to click the gear menu and then backup. When you save your course, the process is called backup. And when you add it or upload it to a different site, the process is called restore. First, make sure you saved or backed up your practice course. Make sure you have it in a safe place on your computer. Our teacher Sam has her practice course on her desktop here. We click Site Administration in the nav drawer, find Courses and click Restore Course. We can then import the backup file either by clicking the button to upload it or as our teacher Sam is doing here, dragging and dropping it in. Once the process is complete, there is a green success message